Hello everyone, I'm Zhe, postdoc researcher at UCLA. Today I'd like to present our recent work as a live demonstration entitled Real-Time Causing Trace Extraction on Large Field of View Miniscope. This work is a collaboration across Computer Science Department, Department of Psychology, and Department of Neurology at UCLA. First, I'd like to present some background for the demonstration. Miniscopes are a type of miniaturized causing imaging device that can be implanted at a certain brain region of a mouse or a rat. It can image cell activity from a large population of neurons while the animal is performing different kinds of behavioral tasks. The most recent version of the miniscope is called the LFOV miniscope, which has an enlarged field of view. It is designed for large rodents and non-human primates and can monitor largely increase the number of neurons compared to previous generations. This video demo shows a rat carrying an LFOV miniscope in the live environment. In real experiments, we connect the LFOV miniscope with a data acquisition board called DAQ using a 1.5 meter flexible cable for the data transmission purpose. The video on the right displays the recorded causing images. It captures images at 1296 by 972 spatial resolution and 22.8 frames per second speed. According to offline analysis, hundreds or even more cells can be detected from a 6-minute recording session. Conventional causing image analysis are often performed offline. In that case, Causing image videos are first stored on a disk and then processed by a general purpose CPU or GPU. In this demonstration, we aim at realizing real time causing image processing and the trace extraction on specialized programmable hardware, targeting short deterministic latency at spike timing precision at one millisecond. We believe that the real time causing image processing can provide closed-loop feedback capability and offer neuroscientists new ways for carrying out neuroscientific experiments for the basic brain research. Our proposed real-time causing image processing pipeline consists of three steps. The first two steps are the motion correction and the image enhancement. The motion correction is a critical pre-processing step in removing motion artifacts caused by the movement of the brain tissue during the recording. The image enhancement improved the signal-to-noise ratio of the traces by removing a bulk of the causing image background. The third step is the trace extraction, which calculates the causing traces from pre-stored binary cell contours. Our proposed causing image processing pipeline applies the frame-based stream processing, and it helps reduce both the latency and the memory access. We designed dedicated IPT accelerators for these three processing steps. This figure shows the IPTA-based causing image processing system. Customized accelerators for the motion correction, the image enhancement, and the trace extraction are implemented on the IPTA fabric, whereas the embedded ARM processor takes the responsibility in sending commands and governing the data transmission. On top of the FPGA, we built an interface PCB board that connects both the DAQ and a host computer. The DAQ transfers the causing image data from the LFOV miniscope to the FPGA over the interface PCB. And the interface PCB sends the motion corrected causing image video and extracted cell traces to the host computer over the Ethernet. As the time Timing diagram shows a large portion of the motion correction and the enhancement operations can overlap with the image readout. In this way, it can largely reduce the computation latency. We also built an on-chip DRAM buffer for storing the enhanced image. It helps eliminate off-chip DRAM access and improve the energy efficiency. To further reduce the latency of the trace extraction, we proposed three optimization methods, namely the region segmentation, the fast forward, and the double buffering. The region segmentation sets constraints on cell contour locations 
for each round of the pixel scan, and it helps reduce the processing time. The fast forward shortens the scan process by skipping over background pixels. The double buffering saves the computation time by overlapping the load and store operations with the trace extraction. Detailed implementation of these methods has been discussed in the paper and an earlier presentation in this conference. We implemented our IPTA hardware design based on the Cylix Ultra 96 platform. The implantable miniscope connects with the DAQ over a coax cable. The miniscope clock, synchronization signal, and 8-bit data signals are routed from the DAQ to the interface PCB through fly jumper wires. Our FPGA implementation consumes a majority of the on-chip VRAM resource, while well, 30-60% to 60 computation resources still remain available. We evaluated the latency performance under the proposed optimizations. By combining all of the optimizations, the trace extraction latency can be reduced to 589 microseconds, whereas the increased IPTA resource usage is within 2%. This photo shows the hardware setup for the demonstration. We developed a graphical user interface on the host computer to display and record the motion-corrected video and the extracted calcium traces in real time. We built a virtual image sensor on the IPTA that can replay 1,000 frames of calcium images at exactly the same timing as the LO4V miniscope sensor for the debugging purpose. In the following slides, I'll present our recorded demonstrations based on the virtual image sensor. I'm going to present four demonstration cases. First, Let's look at the replay of 1,000 frames of raw calcium images. For the ease of the FPGA implementation, we cropped the calcium image into 512 by 512 resolution. Next, let's look at the demonstration on the real-time motion correction. As the motion correction aligns each frame of image against the template, the user needs to first define a 128 by 128 sub-image region to calculate the template. The user can also type in the X and Y coordinates to select such an image region. Then the program can calculate the template and start the motion correction. This slide puts the raw and the motion corrected calcium image videos side by side for a comparison. On the bottom, 
we show the motion vectors evaluated under each case throughout the 1000 time steps. In the third case, I'd like to show the demonstration on the counter-based trace extraction. The program first loads offline detected cell contours and then uploads them to the FPGA and finally starts the real-time trace extraction. In order to demonstrate that our real-time trace extraction can support a maximum of 1024 cells, in the last case we show that trace extraction for selectable group of cells. In this demonstration, we show that our FPT implementation can simultaneously track traces from 12 groups and in total 760 different cells. In summary, in this presentation, we introduce our proposed IPTA-based real-time calcium image processing and trace extraction hardware system design and implementation. And we show the graphical user interface we built for real-time calcium image and cell trace displaying and recording. Based on these developed hardware and software, we demonstrated real-time calcium image motion correction and trace extraction for the LFOV miniscope. We believe our work can enable novel closed-loop feedback neuroscientific experiments for the brain research in the future. With that, it ends our presentation.
Thank you very much for your interest and attention.